Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're going to continue our look at what is called a biblical documentary called The World Upside Down. Now today we're going to go over two of my favorite subjects. One is the tides and the other is gravity and all things related to it. So let's go ahead and let them get started. We'll see what their story is and then try and set them straight. Cue up the music and let's go. This may be confusing because the world teaches us that the gravity of the moon is what causes the tides. The truth is, however, that gravity does not exist. We are told that gravity is the reason the oceans stay to the ground. If this were true, we would all be cemented to the surface of the earth. Birds would not be able to fly. Balloons would not be able to float. We would not even be able to lift a finger. You know, I always found this claim to be rather silly. Why on earth would gravity affect oceans more than it would affect people or birds? Well, oceans are pretty big. There's a lot of mass in the ocean, and the key thing with gravity is mass attracting mass. So the more mass you have, the more force the gravity exerts on you. Now, individual water droplets can actually float in the air as fog or clouds. But once they condense to raindrops, they fall to the ground because their mass is enough compared to their surface area to allow them to fall. When they're in the ocean, the oceans are kept down by gravity. And no spot on the ocean is higher than another spot. Gravity will cause them to, quote unquote, level out. And that is one of the origins of the term level and why it is different than flat. Now let's look at his next example and see where he's gone wrong there. The birds. I love the birds and the butterflies. Now, birds and butterflies both have mass. But what do they have that the ocean water does not? They have wings. They have wings and they put energy and work into maintaining their position up in the air or flying. What happens when a bird stops flapping its wings? It falls to the ground. What happens to a butterfly? When its mass increases, say its wings get wet, it no longer can generate enough energy to keep up in the air, and it too falls to the ground. What happens to an airplane when the engines stop? It settles to the ground. When an object puts energy into fighting gravity, by flapping its wings or firing up its jet engines, it can overcome the pull of gravity. It can generate lift, but it takes energy to do that, and when that energy stops being put into the system, the object, like all objects, will end up falling to the ground due to gravity. Now, the balloon example is another favorite of mine. This demonstrates the concept of buoyancy. Now, there is such a thing as buoyant force. Now, the long and the short of things with buoyancy is there's helium in those balloons. The helium is displacing a certain amount of air equal to the volume of the balloon. If the helium weighs more than the air that it displaces, it will sink. If it weighs less than the air that it displaces, the air will fall down around it and push it up. It will end up floating like a boat on the water. The way boats float is that they displace more water than they weigh. As a result, the water comes in underneath them and pushes them up. Now here's an interesting experiment that we can do. If we took those helium balloons and put them in a large bell jar and started removing the air from that bell jar, there would be a point in time that they no longer strained at the string. They would hover with neutral buoyancy. And as we continued to remove the air, the balloon would actually fall down because the helium in the balloon has its own weight. And if it no longer is being pushed up by the air around it, it will settle down to the floor. The reason things drop to the ground is due to density, not gravity. Objects continue to fall until they come in contact with something denser than itself. Now, I have a number of videos on my channel showing that this is not correct. And we know that it's not correct for two reasons. One, 
The density tower here is the result of a number of liquids of different densities that do not mix being put into a column. A force acts on all of those liquids, and that force is gravity. Gravity exerts the most force on the densest liquids. And what will happen is those liquids settle to the bottom. The lightest liquids will be pushed up, and this will continue through all the different layers of liquid. Unless that force is acting on this density tower, those liquids will not separate like that. And we can demonstrate this by looking at experiments in both the parabolic flight or the vomit comet and on the International Space Station. Another way that we can test it is we can blow bubbles into a bottle of water and then drop that bottle of water. You will see that the bubbles stop rising as soon as the effect of gravity is removed from that bottle of water by dropping it. Another way that we can separate out liquids into layers like this is to spin them in a centrifuge. They don't separate out under just the force of gravity, but if we spin them at a high rate of speed, the centrifugal force will actually pull the denser liquids further out, displacing the lighter liquids forward. So if you spin a tube of blood, all of the blood cells will be in the bottom of the tube towards the outside of the centrifuge, and all the serum will be in the top towards the hub of the centrifuge. Same principle. You have to have a force acting on the liquids to make them separate like this. And despite what you may have heard on some videos, density is not a force. Relative density is not a force. Weight and buoyancy are forces because they are masses undergoing an acceleration. There is no acceleration in density. You may be wondering, then what does cause the tides? The answer is magnetism. What you talking about, Willis? One of the characteristics of water is that it is diamagnetic. You may be wondering, what does diamagnetic mean? The word diamagnetic means that it is something that repels a magnetic field. Here's a brief video showing water being repelled by a magnet. Now, rather than go into a potentially copyrighted video, I'm going to just sit down and tell you that diamagnetism actually does exist. It's not a very strong force at all, and there is certainly nothing that would cause tides to rise and fall on a particular schedule during the day. Tides are actually caused by both the sun and the moon. It is a real thing. It just has nothing to do with the tides. Now, if his assertion was correct and tides were the result of some sort of a magnetic activity, it would be rather significant magnetic activity to move the amount of water we see moved in the tides throughout the world. Clearly, we would be able to measure that activity. We have never measured such activity, and either has he. So basically what he's doing right here is talking out of his tail and making something up. Just because you read an article in Wiki that says there's something called diamagnetism doesn't mean it has anything to do with the subject that you are trying to discuss. Tides is one of those subjects. So how does the diamagnetic property of water come into play with the tides? The sun and moon act as a battery in the sky. The sun and the moon are a battery in the sky, with the sun being the positive pole and the moon being the negative pole. And your evidence for this is, what? The sun having a positive charge and the moon having a negative charge. The sun's positive charge repels the water at low tide and the moon's negative charge attracts the water at high tide. This is why there's a constant rate of waves being thrown up on the seashore. The opposing forces of the sun and moon cause the ocean to be in a constant state of tumult. Okay, so let me get this straight. The moon has a negative charge, which we can't measure. The sun has a positive charge, which we also can't measure. They set up this diamagnetic variation in the oceans, causing the tides, which we can't measure. And the waves are caused by magnetism. This stuff just 
kind of writes itself for you, doesn't it? Where on earth did you come up with any of this nonsense? Seriously? Waves are caused by wind, dude. Wind. You know the thing that utterly amazes me about this section concerning gravity and the tides? There was no evidence whatsoever presented to show that gravity did not exist. Where were any citations? Where were any explanations for things that could not be accounted for by density? You know, this argument is a very common one in both creationism and the flat earth. They have to say that gravity doesn't exist because that would mandate a spherical Earth because of the size of the Earth. Gravity would force that mass to collapse into a sphere. Uh, that's why every other planet that we have ever seen is spherical in shape. We don't have any cube-shaped or pyramid-shaped planets out there, and we certainly have no disks. It's typical of them to try and replace gravity with some other force that doesn't mandate a spherical shape of the Earth. Now, density or relative density is a classic example. And when you show people that relative density does not cause objects to separate out, if there is not a force acting on those objects, they don't seem to get it. Let me give you a good example. This is a rock. This is a piece of styrofoam. This is very light. It doesn't have very much density. This is a much heavier. It has a lot more density. If I put them next to each other, does the rock move towards the lighter object or does the lighter object move towards the rock? Or do they move away from each other? No, they don't. There is a force causing them to go downward. And if I release these objects, they both fall down. And if there was an air resistance to take into account, they would fall down at the same rate. A good thought experiment for a person that believes objects fall due to density is to take three bowling balls. Take an 8-pounder, a 12-pounder, and a 16-pounder. They're the same size but they have different masses, so they have different densities. Roll them all off the top of a building at exactly the same time and see how they hit the ground. Does the heavy one hit first? Does the light one hit first? Or do the, all three of them hit at the same time? All three of them hit at the same time, and that's been demonstrated repeatedly. Now, the only way that that will happen is, is if a uniform acceleration is acting on all three masses. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the density. And as far as this electric universe causing the tides, that's just utter horse hockey. They made that up completely. Now, one thing that you will notice is that they made absolutely no Bible references talking about the sun being positively charged and the moon being negatively charged. Where would you find that passage? In the Holy Book of Tulsa, chapter 13, verse 7? Who knows? So why aren't they using Bible verses with this? Because this has nothing whatsoever to do with the Bible. This is made up out of whole cloth. Well, guys, this has been an interesting episode of basically made-up stuff with no Bible verses to back it up even. So go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and the bell icon button down there. Have a look at these other playlists. There's some interesting stuff here that I think you may enjoy. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take care. Until next time.